Today we are on lesson 67 of book 4, Sex and Math. Today we're going to talk about multiplying by multiples of 10. So I have shown you this trick before. Anything times 10 is going to be this number with a zero tacked on to the end of it. So we've talked about this. We've done some things with this trick. For example, this answer would be 320. What I haven't really showed you yet is why that works, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to rewrite this vertically, 32 times 10. And then we're going to solve it as if it were a normal two-digit by two-digit multiplication problem. So remember, we start with our ones place. So we would do 0 times 2 is 0, and then 0 times 3 is 0. Then we come down here, because now we're multiplying times our tens place, so we have to put a placeholder there in the ones of a zero. And then we do one times two is two, one times three is three, and then when we add them up, we're adding nothing, zero, to 320, so we get our answer of 320. So the reason this trick of just tacking that zero on at the end, the reason that works is because of this one right here. When we multiply, anything times one equals itself. So including 32 here. When we multiply 32 times one, we get 32. But when we have a zero, as in the number 10 here, we've got 32 tens. So we have to put that zero in the ones place and we end up with 320. So today's lesson is similar. Grab an eraser here. Today's lesson is similar, except we're going to change it up on you a little bit. In our first example, we're multiplying 25 times 30. So let me write it horizontally. This is how they have it in the book. So what you want to think about is you want to split up the 30 into three tens. So really, we can look at 30 as 3 times 10, because 3 times 10 is equal to 30, right? So then what we're doing is 25 times 3 times 10. We know the trick for times 10. So we just do our 25 times 3 here. We're counting quarters, 25, 50, 75. Then times 10 for our tens trick, we just tack a zero on at the end of our 75 there. Okay, so your book will write these in kind of a funny looking way. Let me show you how the book would have written 25 times 30 in your written practice. If you see this type of problem in your lesson practice or in your written practice, they move the zero off to the side there. So the reason that they do that is because we're saying we're not really worrying about the zero or to worry about it at all. All we're doing is bringing it down into our answer in the ones place. So really what we wanna do when we're answering this 25 times three problem is we want to just do 25 times 3. 25, 50, 75. And then this 0 that they wrote kind of off to the side, they're just dropping that down into the answer. I think the reason the book writes it like this is because they want to remind you, don't worry about that 0. That 0 just goes into the answer. Don't make this problem harder than it is. Okay, our next example says to complete a spelling test, 30 students each wrote 34 different words. How many spelling words will the teacher check all together? That sounds like an awful spelling test to grade. 30 students wrote 34 different words each. So we have 30 groups of 34. We're going to multiply and I like to write the zero number on the bottom. So I'm going to put 34 on the top and 30 on the bottom. And I'm going to write it like your book would so that you can kind of practice seeing it that way. We ignore the zero or 
if we want to first things first, bring it down to the bottom, then we don't have to think about the zero anymore. Then we're going to do 3 times 4, which gives us 12. We carry our 1 over there. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1, 10. And there's our answer, 1,020 spelling words. Yikes, that teacher has a lot of work ahead of her. All right, our next example says a number of school support staff ordered 23 ring binders for the school bookstore. If the cost of each binder was $1.43, what was the total cost of the order? So each binder is $1.43. I'll write that down on my whiteboard here. And they bought 20 of them. So same thing, even with the decimal, we're just going to move that zero kind of off to the side so that we either deal with it first or we can wait to the end to tack it on at the end. But we're multiplying now. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 1 is 2. And notice how I didn't even worry about the decimal whatsoever. I'm multiplying money, so my answer is going to be money. So once I've got all my digits written down, then I can go back in and go, okay, my decimal point needs to go there for the change. And we've got a dollar sign. So the total order will be $28.60. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get some more practice with this by doing our lesson practice problems. These are on page 431 if you'd like to follow along in the book. Otherwise, I do have them on the board behind me. Um, looks like A has a little bit of a glare on it. It says 75 times 10. If you can't read that, A is 75 times 10. So right now, I'd like you to hit pause. Work on these on either a whiteboard or a piece of paper at home by yourself. When you have answered them all, hit play again, and we will go over the answers together. Okay, so for A here, we have 75 times 10. Remember the trick, 75 times 1 gives me 75. And then I have one zero here, so I'm going to tack on one zero in my answer. Same thing with B, 10 times 32. 1 times 32 gives me 32. I have one zero here, so I'm going to tack on one zero in my answer. So for A, if you got 750, give yourself a pat on the back. B, if you got 320, give yourself another pat on the back. And moving on to C. So this one switches it up just a little bit. We have 10 times 53 cents. So 53 times one gives us 53. And we have a zero that we're gonna tack on but this is 530 cents. We don't want to leave it like that. How would we rewrite 530 cents? We would rewrite it as dollars and change. And so 530 cents is the same thing as $5 and 30 cents. Moving on to D, they wrote this one vertically for us, so we can just drop our zero. Six times two gives me 12. Carry my one. Two times two is four, plus one is five. So D is 520. E, again, they wrote it vertically and I can just drop my zero. Three times four, is 12, carry my one. Three times six, 18 plus one is 19, carry another one. Three times one is three plus one is four, and this is money, so I have to make sure to fill in my dollar and my decimal sign there. And F, again, we're just going to drop our zero 
Five times five is 25. Carry my two there. Five times four, this five times this four, 20 plus two for 2,250. There's one more problem. It's a word problem, or not a word problem, but it gives you some directions here. It says, write 12 times 30 as a product of 10 and two other factors, then multiply. So once again, it says write 12 times 30. So we're going to start with writing that. It wants us to write this as a product of 10 times two other factors. So it wants us to break something down so that we can have times 10. Do you remember this from the first example? Our 12 is going to stay the same. What goes in the middle there? What's that other factor that we need for this one to be equal to this one? We have 12, we have 10. What number times 10 is going to give me 30? Three. So, here's how they wanted us to write it. And then they say solve. So go ahead and do that right now. 12 times three. Excuse me. 12 times three, we're gonna count by 12s. 12. 24, 36, and then 36 times 10. We're just tacking a 10 onto the end of it, so you should have gotten 360. All right, boys and girls, now is the time for you to start your written practice. That begins on page 431 in your textbook. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you soon.